This piece, the alternative Southern Belle, was done, started in France, because I don't think I could have done it here in the States. It's uh, having all four grandparents being born in Troy, Alabama, and myself and my parents as well, uh, the idea of the Southern Belle was very strong. But I lived in France now, it's been 45 years, I've been spending at least six months a year over there. And when one lives in a different country, you have different perspectives. And I've watched the Algerians and the Muslims come into France and help build their country as the slaves did here. And, and the Indians, the American, Native Americans. And it's like there needs to be some sort of an homage done to the black people as the alternative Southern Belle with the females. So I used a black friend from Texas in France and did her portrait. And, and uh, she had been trying to get pregnant for several years with her husband, her French husband. It didn't work. So I put a pillow under her, her dress or whatever she was wearing. And uh, she got and did her portrait like this. And she got pregnant three months later. So I was really pleased with that little magic. Now, the black lady, she's got a widow's peak at the top. And as hygiene certainly did not come from the Europeans. I mean, the French um, teeth rotted, or the English teeth rotted out before they were 21. And the French smelled so bad it was dreadful. On the metros, if you've ever been on a metro in the 70s, you know what I mean. Deodorant was not a big factor. And so you have the comb and the toothbrush, which must have come from the black people, from the African Americans. There's a cotton, which was one of their duties, was standing in front of his mother because she was obviously a white servant, a white slave, uh, an indoor slave, a, a house slave. They got pregnant. The, the magnolia pod is in the place of her womb. He's holding a silver spoon because usually these children were sent to northeastern schools for their education if, if the owner loved them and if he accepted his, his partnering, partnering with the, uh, the slave. And they had an education and they were passed off as white. And I'm sure that I've got some of that in my genes. <laughs> The goat hoofs, or the cloven hoof, in the Bible it was a symbol of being unclean. And I'm sure it was a southern belle that, that told their husbands that the black ladies were not clean to keep them away from them because they're terribly sensual. The three pansies, the Irish have given the three pansies as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, my wife says, no, 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 those were Tridelt symbols at the University of Alabama. You didn't get that from the Irish. I said, well, maybe it came from the Tridelts, but also having a lot of Irish friends. I used it here, but instead of the third pansy between her breast to accentuate the sensuality that hovers over the apron with an Alabama pocket on it, you've got the three pearls of wisdom around her neck floating, because you can't really, uh, it's not tangible uh, wisdom. Though there's a, there's a wasp nest, a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant nest that's been built on her ear, kind of like the little person that sits on your shoulder that says, do this and don't do this, your conscience. But every time she did, she stepped out of line, she got stung either by an insult or by the whip. So it's, they're burgundy and red and gold mosaics on the four sides creating a cross. And uh, the dogwood berries, which are blood red, and all the, the dogwood blossom is a symbol of the cross as well are part of this, and my grandfather owned gas stations here in Troy, and I remember the blacks and the white ladies and gentlemen 
and then the black bathroom and the black water fountain and all this stuff. So I had to throw that in at the bottom and used a 19th century frame because, thank God, we've made progress. These are uh, Corinthian capitals that were on the plantation, the big houses, and the columns. 